Paula Dunn attacking Jackson, but Jackson with that long stride comes away and goes trying to close. Beating but he's Jackson now. Grace Jackson Beating. comes home in front. And on the inside, a young man now. Well, Jackson now coming through. Thompson, Herra and Dina Asher Smith have got a lot to do. Asher Smith is coming into the mix. It's Jackson's turn to be the queen of sprinting. 21.46. She becomes the fastest living woman on earth. The parish of St. Anne has some serious bragging rights. I mean, having birthed greats such as global icon Bob Marley, national hero Marcus Garvey, and dance hall greats like Shabarangs, and so many more, it also claims two very special Jamaican women as its daughters. And they're joined not only by birthplace, but coincidentally by surname. And they're the blueprint and the future of athletics. It is my honor to speak with today Grace Jackson, former national athlete and current head of sports and facilities at the St. Augustine Academy of Sport at the University of the West Indies, and easily Jamaica's most versatile champion, one of the greatest female combined sprinters of all time, the current world champion for the 200 meters, and of course, the first ever brand ambassador for Scotiabank, Sharika Jackson. Ladies, I am so happy to talk to you today. How are you all doing? I'm fine. I'm well. <laughs> it's about I'm the well, Jacksons well. today, right? I am I'm yes. in fantastic company, and I'm honored to be with you both. Grace, I'm going to start with you. Is that okay, madam? Yes. I'm going to go it. virtual before I join on set. Um, Grace, let's go back to 1987. I wasn't born yet, but let's pretend that um, I was. You come to bronze medal at the IAAF World Indoor Championships. I fast forward to Seoul, where you swam your way to silver, and some other great notable achievements. You are undoubtedly still one of the leading names in Jamaican and international sprinting. Very tall, very graceful, dominant on the curve. You caused a lot of headache and heartache back then um, in your day. So when you think about your time and you think about what Sharika is up against now, tell me a little bit about how you feel the competition compares when you look at sprinting now. I think that the competition obviously has gotten so much better, but I think that we Jamaicans are even much, much more prepared. And the preparation is not so much that we are physically prepared. We are absolutely mentally prepared. We have no fear. We go out with confidence and we know we will win. Yeah, we, we, we don't exercise doubt when we step out there. We step out there with a sense of confidence that this is, this is who we are and this is what we do. And, and, and that is displayed, not just, it gives me cold bumps even saying it because it makes me feel, it's almost a sense of power that you have within you, that you're going out there and you're looking at the others and you say, not today. You know, this is my day. It's a sort of self-confidence that's built into the system of your mind and your body that even with nerves, you are confident that you know that your performance is going to be a good one. I want to ask you, you feel that, Jericho? You feel that, that Grace is talking about? You feel that confidence? You feel that power when you step on the track? Because oftentimes we talk about male sprinting versus female sprinting and who has the bigger pull and who has the bigger draw? Do you feel like women are getting their due now? And do you feel that power when you step on the track? Um, definitely. Um, to compete amongst the great, the greatest female sprinters right now, definitely. And I think right now, if you look, the females are definitely more competitive than oh. men. Yes. Has been for a while, Sharika. Look at you <laughs> both <laughs> serving the men. Oh, my gosh. So when you sit here now, Cher, and you look at... Uh, Grace Jackson sitting here with us today, right? How do you feel? Because this is like this is like legacy and legacy, different <sighs> eras. Like I'm getting goosebumps. But how does it feel to be able to sit at the foot of greatness and and be able to talk to her in this way? Um, it definitely feels good. I think it's the first time we actually like having a conversation or just listening, just me listening to Grace. To be honest, um, I've watched her over the years, and it just feels good to 
for her to be sitting right there. And I think it's a really good feeling. Mm -hmm. One of the sprinters that you would have looked up to on your journey? Yeah, definitely. And who are the others? Um, at the time, I like Alyssa Felix. Mm -hmm. I think knowing that she ran both for 2 on one I think Alyssa Felix was there. I saw Shelly back in 20, no, 2008. So, you know, Grace, Shelly, and Alison. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, Grace, I'm going to ask you, like, the reverse of Sherika's question, right? Because she's sitting here. She is, we said the future. You're the blueprint. She's the future. But she's really also the present, eh? So, yeah, um, so, so what do you, when you see her, when you watch her journey, I mean, what hits you about her and how she executes herself uh, in the space? Well, I can tell you, I'm having cold bumps, not just in my arms, but going through my legs as I'm thinking about I am, it's the vision, you know, uh, Sharika comes with a lot of things that those of us in the first, second generation of success in athletics probably didn't have the same way. Strength, confidence, and knowing that it, it's really, this is what I'm going to do today. We would have had, back in the days with Merlin and myself, um, you know, busting out at that period, we had the Germans, we had the Russians, and we would like, can we beat them? We would question whether or not we were good enough to be able to beat them. We would run them down, but we, would, we did not have the confidence that they were going to see our heels. And... I think there is a significant difference with that era and what we were, what we did and with this generation, when they step out on that track, they are not doubting whether they are going to win. They are looking at whether they are going to make that target that they have set um, to, to achieve in that particular championships or that race throughout that particular period, you know, meaning... They are tougher. We were being engaged. We were fearful of the Russians and the East Germans those times. And we, we, you know, we just wanted to hang in there and do our best. And Merlin did great by, you know, her toughness came through and, you know, started when she started getting her medal, you know, going on the medal stand. And I think that in itself brought confidence to those who rolled out after her mm -hmm. because she could take them on, we can take them on, and it helped to build that kind of confidence, I think, along the path. So within a cultural context, there's less to fear. So them young lady are not afraid of nothing is essentially what you're saying. Absolutely. Uh, Sherika, is that true? Um, definitely, <laughs> definitely, definitely. So <laughs> once you stand at that start line, everybody basically at zero and you want to win. So therefore, I'm going to the line to win. I'm not going there to come second or third or fourth. I want to win and everybody want to win. So I think it takes away being, having this fear of, oh, I'm going up against the best. But mm -hmm. you're, you have to remember that you are also the best. Yeah. So. And a lot of it comes down to technique. And Grace, I want to talk about technique. Um, mm -hmm. You two share. But a lot of it also comes down to mental preparation, right? I don't know what your training was like, Grace. 100, 200, both of you, 400, right? You know what it's like. To, you know what it, it takes to, to come to all of them, the different skill sets, the different techniques, execution. Uh, but I want to know, Grace, when you were training, a lot was on the physical technique. How much focus was there on the mental toughness and stability? Okay, so when I moved out of being a high jumper, and moved into running because they would put me to tears in putting me on four by fours, which I hated, <laughs> right? But I sooner learned, <laughs> sooner or later, I learned that 400 built character. It is the running of those 400 and breaking the fear that helped me to understand that if I could really run too fast 400, although I didn't run too fast 400, I'd run a slow, I mean, 200, I'd run a slow 200 and then pick up speed for the last because I knew I could do mm. that part of the race. <laughs> Strategy. Um, <laughs> yes, but, but that in itself 
over time, the diff, you know, the amount of times you had to run it, relays, of course, helped in running the 400 relays. You had the baton. You didn't have a choice. You had to chase and you had to remember that there are a few other people, you know, was part of this. And I think relays helped a lot, even with a lot of fear, to help to reduce some of that and give you the impetus to say, this person isn't going to beat me. It's just a standard. We take this position. Oh, that person is not beating me today. And that is the mental that you know you're doing the hard work. So first of all, in training, sometimes you can barely even get up when training is finished, right? So you are putting in the work in preparation for these high and mighty, I would say, goals that you have. A world record. How can you run 21, 71? That is just out of the range. But we kept it there. I had it on it. I had it in front of me. I saw it all the time. The more you look at it, the more the more it became a reality, and the less fearful you were in your approach. The more you knew you needed to cry and practice because yes. you needed to feel the pain there repetitively in order to come to the meet and be confident that the people that you're running against, your objective would, is just to beat them. Mm -hmm. You know, Sherika, you and I have talked about this, the importance of how, how, you, how mentally tough you have to be. I mean, it's one thing to cry and lay it all on the track physically, but the pressure that you have on you mentally every time you line up, that you put on yourself, but also that other people put on you. Um, I think more so of the mental pressure you put on yourself, because sometimes you can be like, in a space where you, you're, you're physically fit, mm -hmm. but mentally you're not in that space. Mm -hmm. But I think over time, as you grow older, you get to understand that track and field is more mental than physical. So therefore, once you are 100% mentally ready, then therefore your body adopts to the physical aspect of things. So I think now we pay, we pay more attention to the mental mm -hmm. aspect of athletes. And I think it's playing a really important role with being the best and being on top. Can you train your mind in the same way that you train your body? Somewhat, because yeah. um, what you think, you achieve. Right. So once you think you're the best and you work towards it, then you will definitely achieve it. Tell me about the importance of support and community, family, friends, Scotiabank. I think it's yeah. really, really good um, to have a sponsor, to have friends and family just because some days you might not have your best days. Like sometimes you may be out of it and once you know that you have your family, your friends, your sponsor that believes in you, then therefore you automatically get up, like pick yourself up mm -hmm. and like, okay, then I got this because you have persons who are depending on you, you have a person who definitely believe in you 100%, so therefore it automatically becomes that you start believing yourself and say, okay, once they believe in me, that means I'm great. That means I can continue to be on top. So I think just having a good support system is really, really important. And I think now these days we have, like, your family come to the meet and watch. Back in the days, I don't think you really have that that much, but I think it's really, really good. and. As I said, just to have a very strong support system that keeps you grounded is a A+. Plus. Yeah, you spoke about family who comes to the meet and watches when you, when you both run. Grace, I don't know what you had, but I can tell you one thing that's been consistent. We're going to show up at those meets. Like, Olympics, look yeah. out, because when the Yadis take that stage, take those seats in those stands... You know, uh, what's, what does it feel like, Grace? What did it feel like then? I'm sure you can tell me after. To, to look up on from the track and see a sea of black and green and gold and Jamaican flags in the stand. What is that like? You know, as you're talking, Simone, my, 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 my stomach is just, the fluttering of my stomach just kind of, you know, came back to me because... Europe was, for me, very interesting. So I ran in the States, I was in college, and I'd run. But when you went to Europe, it was a whole different ballpark. I mean, you know, you saw all of these persons. And I remember, I ran in the days of Krechavilovia, um, Marlies Gore, you know, Marita Koch, 
those people just looked like they were robots just running. And so, you know, when you knew that you could compete with them, you were lining up with them. And even if you didn't win, but you're staying with them for 80 meters and 100 meters, uh, it, 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 that it, was a it, win. It, it, yeah, it, it, in, in itself. In itself. Uh, I, I also think that even the process of the discipline of just seeing losing a race or not winning a race, not necessarily losing, but just not winning a race and going back to practice, what you did in the workout was really connected to the vision of what would have happened when you were in that race before and what you want to see it look like the next time. Mm -hmm. And so hard training was a natural for what you needed to do because you knew that I'm just this from where I want to be, but just this takes a whole lot of work that you have to do. And the work is not just in the workout. But the work is also in the homework. Yes, ma'am. That is the combination of what really helped you to say, you know, I'm not one of them. They're not beating me. The competition is here. When 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 the when that gun goes off, yeah. somebody has to pay. And it's going to be your competitor. Hey, somebody has to pay. I love that. So, Miss Lady, as you head into Olympics now. Who's, who's going to pay? <laughs> They're going to pay. <laughs> That's right. It's going to pay your mindset. How you stay heading in? Um, right now, I'm really, really good mentally. So I can't complain and I'm healthy. Mm -hmm. you know? um, I'm Look ready. At you. Look at you. And what will it mean for you to see the Jamaican fans in the stand? It means a lot. Um, so sometimes you really want to like interact with them before your race but then sometimes you have to remember like oh i don't compete yet so but once we finish and you cross the finishing line and you just want to do a victory lap to try to take as many photos as possible because there are so many jamaican because if you go to other country and you see in the stand you're like oh this feels like jamaica mm -hmm. like there are so many and they have their flag and they're in their colors it's just really really good because you know being at home you get to interact a lot better but Whenever you're overseas and you see them in the stands, you just ensure that I want to take a photo just to show I appreciate their support. I appreciate them cheering because just sometimes you go out there and you're kind of nervous mm -hmm. and just by them calling your name like, hi, Sharika, let's go. You're like, OK, then it's go time. I got this. I definitely, I got They're gonna this. They're going to pay. They're going to pay. So make sure you find your Scotiabank family. And take enough picture with them. Yes, as you're making definitely. I always be looking for them at the crossing line. <laughs> you, I was like, oh, you know they're going to be there. Definitely. As they always are. I'm going to allow you, Grace, to give Sharika a word before we wrap as she looks forward to uh, such a big, big, big event in her life. What say you to her heading into the Olympics? You are the best in the world, bar none. And so, that is the attitude that you're going to walk in. I know you already have it inside. Intrinsically, you are motivated because you know what it feels like to come across that finish line ahead of other people or the rest of the field. And you know that the work that you're doing in practice, even when you think, oh my goodness, I'm tired, that extra, that little extra that you continuously do is for that surety of that medal coming across the finish line first so that your name is at the top of the board. You already know that your name is going to be on the board, but you have made the decision that it's not going to be in the middle of the board, but it is going to be on the leaderboard. Top of it. Somebody's got to pay. Somebody is going to pay. Boy, yeah. um, what an honor. Sherika, would you like any tips from me? Because I was a champs athlete. All right, <laughs> definitely, definitely. Who is laughing? Yes. <laughs> Grace, is you laughing? <laughs> no, you're not going pop. No, never going to pop a show me today. And I wouldn't even try because what could I possibly have to tell Sherika that she doesn't already know? I know she knows. You know she knows, Grace, and you just reinforced yes, it. Absolutely. Um, no pressure, but you know. You already know. Yeah, I do. We're expecting greatness from you because you are greatness, Sherika. 
We yes, can't be anything else. Absolutely. Even if you tried. We are proud of both of you and we love both of you and we thank both of you for bringing glory and honor to this country. Thank you. Track and field is our legacy and it will continue to be as long as we have standard bearers like yourself, Grace, who laid the blueprint and like folks who, with, like Sharika who continue to pound the pun to run with it. So thank you ladies so much. God bless you both. Sharika, from your head to your toe in Jesus' name. Amen. Cover, 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 yeah. as we would say. All right, we're going to go. Over to Jamaica, over to Scotiabank, 30 seconds. To Scotiabank okay. and to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. I just want to say thank you for your support, your continuous support, and it's unconditionally. Um, just by seeing, especially Scotia, uh, two major championships so far, and just to be get their support, um, it's a great feeling, you know, to have a sponsor that supports you 100% and believe in you. I just want to say thank you so much, and I definitely will continue to make you guys proud. Um, I'm just so happy to be a part of the Scotiabank family. And to Jamaica, thanks for your continuous support. I'll definitely wear the Jamaica flag proudly. And thank you. Thank you. High five. Got this. Somebody's going to pay. Not me. I will watch. I'm <laughs> staying for years to say it. Somebody's got to pay. Thank you, Grace. Thank you, Sharika. Thank, yes, thank you both you ladies very much. Thank for you representing for Jamaica us. so honorably at the highest level. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And good luck, Sharika. Thank Go you. Do it. Yeah. <laughs>